Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. Today is a wonderful and, and you know nice day in South Bay so I decided well let's shoot outside and that's where I am. Uh, you might hear some background noise but let's get through this today. For people who are new to my channel this is where we talk about machine learning and artificial intelligence jobs. Um, this is in order to help you uh, in your and, and guide you in your job search and uh, if you are looking for tips and strategies or connect to a community um, this would be the place to talk you know through with me with the other peoples uh, you know in, on this channel and then you know uh, get through your AI and ML job search so thank you for having me you know on your journey so far and if you're new to this channel please give this a video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so today I wanted to talk about what a successful AI ML job search can be like and there are a lot of success stories right now you know you can see them on social media on LinkedIn but I myself have been embarking on this journey and if you've seen some of the videos so far of course it's not been uh, it, it'll, it's been a roller coaster of a ride it's not been easy at all and that's why you could have seen you know how to cope with rejection how to cope with bad news so those were actually things that I was experiencing when I was going through this whole process and going through an AI ML specific job search in this pandemic market I actually learned a lot there's a lot of nuances that's new to this market right now and I actually made a list of everything so I wanted to share these six tips or these six nuances that I see now in the job search market and I can talk about them because I have been successful now uh, I'll talk about my new job and my new role in the videos to come so please stay tuned for them but let's get to the six nuances or to these six new um, you know strategies and tips that can actually help uh, going through you know my job search for you as well so let's get straight to it so step number one and something that I'm finding now more than before is that job searches are longer so um, typically before at least in the Bay Area it would be like you know a few weeks you know coding exams and then you, you go through the, your rounds and you're done but now it can actually go through a few months so if you think that you know your, your process is going over a few months don't despair you still have a chance of success it's a lot of companies are figuring out um, you know if they really have a need for this role as they're interviewing so if they really fall in love with the candidate it's unlikely that they're going to rescind the offer so if processes are taking time give it time so don't worry about you know if it's going to be successful or not you know you hate to be in a limbo I, of course we understand but there's hope at the end of this tunnel so sometimes it takes time and right now it takes a little more time so be okay with it the second tip is that finding a best match is key and a best match works both ways it's not just the company being a best match for you or you being the, the best match for the company but it has to be both ways and if under any circumstance either one of this case uh, is not satisfied then that job is better gone than being yours and then to you know regret later on uh, and in most cases you have to actually be able to show enough experience towards that particular specialization that the job is requiring otherwise the search may not end up well so I personally had been working on a very different project that I had you know two years before um, so for the past let's say a year back I've been working on more data analytics so web analytics but when I started applying for jobs, I saw there was more need for web analytics than for computer vision sort of roles. However, I can't compete with people who've been doing, uh, you know, data analytics for you know three to five years. So of course, my my resume fell short, and I was not the the best fit or the best match for those those roles. So it's important to understand that it is you have to be the best fit for that role. And it's not just, you know, if, if a rejection happens, if the company says, no, we're going another way. I know at that moment it hurts. And I know myself because I've gone through it and I've been in the, in a, in the industry for so long, but still uh, rejection hurts and I know that. But think about it this way. If you had gotten that job, you would have been unhappy anyways. So the best match, the concept of best match is you don't just have to be a best match for the company, but the company has to be a good match for you too. 
So whenever it doesn't work out with the company or whenever they say, hey, we've decided to go another way, it's actually a good thing for, for you to have figured out early or figured out, you know, before you at least, you know, joined and felt trapped in that particular role that, you know, it, it stopped, you, you nipped it in the bud. So don't feel that it was a bad thing that happened, but you should think that if a rejection happens, a rejection is also an unfit. So whenever you know you, you get that rejection email, read it as an unfit email. So that company is unfit for you and you know it, it is a mismatch. So always treat a rejection as a mismatch and then it, it's not gonna hurt your psyche that much. But like I said, and even in, in, in my experience, that was, that's what I found, is the, is the role that I landed in, it was an extremely good fit. It's what something that I've been doing a lot. I've been doing it for a long time. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'll tell you about it in the weeks to come, but it felt like it, it fit like a glove. So, you know, it, it wasn't going out of my way or for, for me to learn something new. So understand that finding the right fit in this market is very important for you to be successful in your new role. The third thing that I have seen in the market right now is, um, you know, uh, up till about a year or a year and a half back, coding interviews. And of course, if you are getting, you know, for data science roles or AI machine learning roles, it's very often very common, especially in the Bay Area, to give coding, coding rounds and coding tests. But nowadays, uh, the coding tests are being made offline. So, you know, your interviewer is not online at the same time and he's not asking you questions. They're not breathing down your neck. So you have a little more time to actually uh, do your exams. And it makes sense because now with the COVID, everybody has a different uh, situation of, of dealing with personal and, and professional life. So nowadays you get like 24 hours to finish an exam. So understand that you know, offline exams are very common now. The fourth aspect that I figured out is the number of developer jobs or the number of engineering jobs are actually six times the number of management roles that are opening up right now. What that means is if six engineering roles open up, there are probably going to be one management or engineering manager roles that open up. So if you want to keep your options open and if you are into you know engineering management, then probably getting into a principal role or you know get, getting into a developer uh, that that aspect of it might open up your chances more so this is just something to you know bear into mind when you're making you know trying to make your decision as to what direction you want to go into point number five that i am seeing right now is there is a lot of importance to production and delivery sort of role so think about it if you are already an engineer uh you you know you, you're, you're working on on, a, you know, on certain projects you really need to show the, these these uh, you know hiring managers that you have had experience in delivering a project that's what they want to know more about so r d has you know, taken sort of a back step right now. There are not as many research and development roles where people are being asked to write, you know, papers and, and at least uh, publish papers in industry at least. So it's very important is whenever you're having your phone rounds or whenever you're having your interviews, you need to give those punch lines as to you have delivered these projects. So I have delivered project X in this particular format in this amount of time. So these are very key things for you to say in our interview in order to you know, put you apart from your competition. And the last but the most important step is to show relevance. You need to be able to connect to your interviewers. And again, of course, it's a, if it's a coding round, how do you go about you know, connecting to the interviewer at that particular point of time? It's just small things in which you finish your sentences or you, you, you finish or you close a particular session that makes a key difference. So in this case, you can say that because I have done X, I believe I can translate this knowledge in order to do Y. So you need to make these you know, clear cut uh, sentences. You need to say these things. So think about it whenever you're preparing for an interview, go through your resume and look at each and every work experience that is listed in there. If there is something which is irrelevant, so example, you know, I was doing, uh, I was a telecommunication engineer back in India and that was like more than you know, 12 years, 13, 14 years back. So I don't want to be listing those things on my resume because I can't talk about them anymore. It's irrelevant to the current rules that I'm looking at. But if, if anything is relevant, uh, the, the very recent projects that you're working on, even it could be your build your own research internship in AI, 
make sure you are able to then you know correlate that to the particular role that you're interviewing for so if you say that yes uh, i was able to do data augmentation i was able to build a whole pipeline in which things were explainable and it was end to end and that is why i believe i can translate this knowledge into the into this new role where it is more production environment so i can deliver end to end models in a very short amount of time so these would be punch lines or these would be things you say in order to close your interviews or in order to close your answers uh, with your employers in order to be successful in this journey so those were my six pointers from this week and we will be closing up the build your own research internship this week and i'm looking forward to our sessions next week on and that's going to be more geared towards people who are entering the AIMO you know for the first time so very simple concepts uh, and materials that i'll be presenting every single week um, so that it, it makes these concepts of, of machine learning and ai a little bit easier and more palatable so stay tuned for everything bye bye